guys are obviously coming off a win, um, undefeated. So how do you feel going into home opener, playing in front of a home crowd this weekend? I think focus. That's that's been the the big word of the week. Um, just a, a real intense focus to do whatever it takes to keep the momentum moving forward. You know, we know it'll be a full house tomorrow and the fans will be excited to see the team back. Um, but I, as I've said to the players, we, we just have to stay focused on our processes, not get carried away with the expectation or the... The, the need to redeem or excite or just we just got to keep moving forward in a positive direction and that's that's results it's about getting something out of this game tomorrow a result and and respecting that this is our stadium this is our city we're back home you've talked not to put words in your mouth but I think you've talked about the past about winning back the trust of the fans after some tough times I know you had one game at the end of the last year, but this is really the new beginning. Do you see tomorrow as kind of one of the first steps of winning back that uh, that trust? Yeah, I think I think the the first the first step was not losing in Cincy. I think and doing what no TFC team had done in that stadium. The second step was doing what only two teams have done in that New England stadium and. And they're making a step to be the only team with the clean sheet in MLS. As I keep saying to the guys, if they just focus on us, our pioneering, our ability to do things that other teams haven't or what they haven't done in the shirt previously, then things will take care of themselves. The trust will come back. You know, it just takes time. It will take time. Uh, I imagine a result tomorrow you know, won't, won't uh, solidify that trust with people, but it'll keep moving in the right direction. This is a team that's finished sort of bottom of the league's last three years, you know. Um, it takes time. I haven't been a Newcastle United fan. You know, it doesn't take a couple of wins to get, get back on side with your, your club, your team. You, you've got to earn it. So I think the main thing, Neil, is just the effort. Uh, the fans need to see that, that commitment and effort. Charlotte are... Uh, are a tough team, as I said yesterday. I think they're like a championship team. In the sort of English championship, they're very front to back quickly. They're second balls. They can play as well. Very athletic. Um, transitionally, a big threat. Set pieces are big threat. So, and, and I think Dean Smith's got them in a, in a really good rhythm as well. I think they're the only team to have, a, I think, the second in goals conceded and they have the lowest defensive XG in the league they're, they're, a, they're a proper team uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a test for us because if we show up and think you know we're going to be playing a brand of football against that team they're not going to let you this is a different uh, a different test tomorrow it's not the little pocket players of you know Acosta and you know Heal as we had last week these are big physical uh, athletes that are, are going to test us. John, can you give us an update on just on some injuries? It didn't look like Richie was out there and um, DeAndre as well. Are they, are they out again this week? Yeah, DK's out again this week. Hamstring. Uh, uh, sorry, he's cough from uh, way back in the Salt Lake. So he's, he's in the last stage as he returned to training this week, which was good news. And we're ramping him up, hopefully, to have him back in for next week. That's We're hoping he'll be able to be at least around the bench. And Richie, just he, he picked up a strain, and that strain, it's just week to week, day by day. So, again, we held him out on precaution today, and we'll reassess him again in the morning. But it's, it, it's a frustrating one because it, he just hasn't been able to shake it. He seems to be you know, close to training, and then he feels it again. And I guess for my sort of paranoia is just that I don't want to put him in situations that are, are going are gonna to risk him. Without, uh, I didn't see Burn out there, or uh, it looked like Raul and uh, Kevin Long were kind of working Yeah, uh, the, a lot of glides got beat up on that turf in New England. Uh, the turf really, um, yeah, they, they, they came up a little bit beat up and with with some aches and sores and uh, yeah so again everything's just precautionary at the minute it's modified minutes and 
making sure that we can patch them up and get them out there for this weekend. But at the same time, you know, those players, if they're not available for us, they'll be tested again in the morning, they'll be checked in. You know, I think we ran a whole pre-season without, um, you know, solidified back back three with Long in it, and I'll be comfortable with the players that will step in if he's not available. Is Lorenzo ready to go? Yeah, he's ready, yeah. Yeah, he's ready to go. He's had some tightness this week off the turf. I mean... As the guys that <laughs> there's a, the guys over thirty, they they don't they don't tolerate the turf well. I mean, it's uh, that's real. So, you know, will uh, Lorenzo's had some tightness this week, and he'll be managed again this this game. Did you mention Fede? Yeah. Oh, Fede was out there. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He trained. Yeah, he just had a two gone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Dean Smith is a deal that uh, his defenders get a bottle of wine from him with every clean sheet. Right? <coughs> is there a similar deal going? Any deals with you? Yeah, well, job? cheers for that now. That's uh, okay. Well, that's on the table then, eh? <laughs> yeah. You know what? It'll be tough to keep a clean sheet against this team. They, uh, they've they got quite a few different ways of scoring and different tests for us. But yeah, a bottle of wine it is then. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> It'll be a cheap one. <laughs> what about Matty, uh, uh, John? Has he kind of fully settled in? And could he, I mean, you talked about last week, this game probably being his debut. Is he ready to go? Today? He's on the bench. He, and if the game opens up in the way I hope it does uh, towards the end, then it'll be room for Matty. I'd like to get him more minutes at TFC 2 and... And just to get him moving again, you know, he played that 30 minutes against LAFC, did a really good job. Um, but but we, we want to get minutes in his time. You can see his quality, but it, there's just, there's a difference, eh? There's a difference between when the fans are there. And so I, I'll see what the game gives. I'd like to get him his debut this weekend, but um, if not, we'll, we'll try and get him minutes in TFC too. Yeah, I mean, the the grounds team have done a terrific job. Um, you know, I, I think we've had a quite a pleasant uh, winter by all accounts. So you know, I got told it was bloody freezing in Toronto and it's, it's been the opposite. So they, they've done a hell of a job getting it in good shape. It will cut up. I think that's, that's the reality. As the game goes on, that centre of the pitch will become uh, a little bit testy. So for us, we'll have to to threaten down the sides pretty quickly because that's that's where the quality on the field is. John, you haven't given Cash so much in the first two games. Um, what's the rationale behind that? Is it just other guys are higher up in the packing order? Or yeah, I think I think it's it, it's a number of things. I think one, um, you've got Lorenzo, Bernadeschi and Azario in those, what I call those magician type positions that I think are critical to the success of the way we play. And their level is is just too high. I mean, you, if Lorenzo comes off, Azario will typically move into that position. If Bernadeschi goes out wide, Azario will move in. So for him, he's got to just wait his moment for, you know, that moment when those players aren't available, international week or... Um, and, and he's a young player, he's still learning. I mean, the South African League... And the standards there are very different to, to, I think, what he's experienced here in MLS. He's he's aware of that. But he's he's putting a shift in behind the scenes. He's hands up every week in, in the training week. And, you know, it's his time's going to come, I think. Have you liked what you've seen from Prince holding the ball up and being in the right? Yeah, yeah, I have. He's definitely improved. I mean, when he, when he first came in, I remember his debut and... It was really shaky, you know, uh, way back last year I got to see that. And he's been working on that, that ability to link and learn how to play with Lorenzo. And I think that's that's a critical part of any player playing as that nine. You've got to know how to open spaces for for Law, Ozo or Bernadeschi. And he's, he's a real team player in that. You know, the selection for New England was really tight between him and Ayo, you know, starting up at that nine. But... You know, Prince has just got that understanding of if I do that, then that can open something for Lorenzo. If I do this, then that opens something for Lorenzo. So, you know, that sort of sacrificial uh, centre forwards, I think, is really important given where our DPs are located. And uh, sorry, John, Florida, 
notorious as Cumbers Advertise? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'd, I'd watched him for five years with Honduras. And, uh, you know, I always always said to my staff, you know, you'd love one of them in your team. You know, we, we had like a Stachio and a Tiber and they, they were a bit more cultured in terms of their defensive work. Uh, I mean, this guy is, he just sets a standard, you know, there's a tone. And you know, if you're playing in the midfield against him, you just don't want to play against someone like Davy Flores. And, and that's infectious for the rest of the team. It sort of toughens them up and sends, sends little messages that I've got your back. It, it may be simplistic, but do you think part of that, it seems like he kind of had a hard scrabble upbringing, you know, came from a tough part of town that, that translates on onto the field? Yeah, I mean, he's got a hell of a story. Hell of a story. And, you know, I think I've, I've said this to the front office, we just need one more of, of that type of personality that have had that, that sort of upbringing, I think we, we just need one more of that somewhere in our lineup, whether it's at centre forward or whether it's at centre back. Just uh, yeah, it's uh, you, you can't underestimate how people's scripting can translate into a positive force in their in their lives, and he certainly allowed that to be a force for the good for him. And I had this conversation with Corsi Thompson. I know, you know, Corsi's had a, he hasn't had it easy either. And, you know, I've said to him, like, dig into that. That's, I think he's got a real profile that he could kick on in this league. His defensive profile is, you know, when you look at his radars, if he starts, you know, he could really take it up a notch and, you know, tapping in again, things he's had in his upbringing, just to bring that little bit of, it's not nasty, it's just the, the desire, the fight, the willing to go to places other, you know, other other people won't. John, you mentioned in passing last week about wanting to use TOC different, t- sorry, TOC two different in this season. I'm just wanting to get you to maybe, maybe sort of expand on that. What, what, what do you mean? Well, I think it's it's got to it's got to facilitate the first team in many ways. It's got to have that dual focus. It's got to have a dual focus to allow targeted academy U19 products that we're working with. So if you don't know, you know me, the staff, we, we work with the U19s, the U17s. We take those young players a session, minimum one session a week. So we're working with them, the first team staff. And we're doing that because I think you have to feel the players. But they also, the academy uh, philosophy you know, bringing that first team philosophy into the academy is really important where they just feel that a different level of intensity and scrutiny and expectation every now and then. And when you see that, you see players who who can tolerate it, who can become men very quickly. And I've said this, you know, it's difficult for these young men to bridge being men in a team that had to prove they're men. And that's what this this team this year have got to do. They, you know, we we can't be just giving young kids because they're showing some prospect, an opportunity if they're not ready to to take on that that mantle. So for me, seeing the academy players working with Gianni and Dino and Anthony Capitosto to say, look, I want to see these guys in TFC two more frequently. Then with the front office, they're doing a great job of identifying guys that have similar profiles to what we want in the first team, like the kid from Brazil. Wide centre-back profile, exactly what we're sort of looking at now with testing. And then ultimately for the first team players. So as I've said to the guys, phase three, it's a 10-week phase. In phase three with five days and six days between games, you don't change your starting lineup very frequently. And in that 10 weeks, there's a group of players that have got to get themselves ready for phase four, which is end of April, early May, where we're in our worst period of back to back to back to back. And they have to be match fit. So you'll see a group of players down with TFC2 playing against York United this weekend. To, with the senior team. With the... Going down. Going down to, to play a minutes and get ready for the game against Atlanta when we have you know, players away on international duty. And then the next, they'll be getting ready for the Cannes Champs and then getting ready for the mere madness. Yeah, time for one more question. Hey, John, uh, Field has been a special place for you. Yeah, it has. You've never lost here as a national team. Yeah. Coach. What makes it so special for you? And, and to go along with that, does that mean that you need to 
change the way that you play away from home to the way that you play here at home? Yeah, I think always, you know, when we've played at BMO Field with the national team, you know, there was always a philosophy of owning the opposition half. You know, I think even this year, I mean, you know, the critics were out, but we smashed Honduras 4-0 here, you know. Um, I don't think that had been done before for a while, but, you know, the the mentality playing the US in 2019, you know, the the mentality was always, you know, when you're at home at BMO Field, it's our fortress. And, and the mentality there when we had our best 11 available was to always get after games and give the fans what they want. The, the away... The away match is different, as you know, Gareth. It's you're in you're in enemy territory. You've got to find a way to win there. But here, it's about starting with our identity first, and then once we've um, committed to that mentally, it's about delivering under the adversity that's going to come, which will be Charlotte and their playing style. This is a, as I'll keep saying it, this is a very difficult opponent. Not not the type that you want in your first match at home. You know, because they they can make the game very ugly very quickly, and if you're not willing to to get in that fight and win second balls and put your body on the line, you're going to suffer against uh, this team.